Farron messaged me yesterday on Facebook and had the great idea to do a spring-themed watercolor painting to replace the fall one that we did in our ladies' retreat. So this is kind of what I came up with. I've done several versions. So if you want to get these materials together, we're going to paint this. What you're going to need is some watercolor paper, a cup of water, watercolors, paper towels, a plate, I like to use styrofoam because it washes up easily, pencil, permanent marker, and two brushes, a medium round brush and a small round brush. And if you want to go find a white crayon, we can make a pattern on our watering can. So first of all, you want to get your paper and you're going to take your pencil and we're going to kind of sketch out our outline. I'm going to sketch it out in the permanent marker to kind of show you where the lines are so you can see it better. We're going to start by making the line for the top of our watering can. Just kind of a gentle dip about halfway up our paper. Then the sides of our watering can. The bottom's gonna be a little bit bigger. So let your line kind of slope outward. And when using your pencil, you can do kind of light sketches and kind of find those lines and erase until you get it to look the way you want it to. I already have it sketched out here, so mine's gonna go by a lot faster. This is the part that you want to take some time to do. So the bottom of our watering can, the dip needs to kind of match the dip on the top. You don't want to have a big dip on the bottom and a little dip on top. That's going to look not as realistic. Our handle, almost like half a heart. And then for the spout, do another little dip, kind of make a little squished oval. It's about the same height as the top of our watering can. That kind of helps you find a place to put it. And attach this down to the bottom of our watering can about a third of the way up our watering can. And then we're going to outline some places for our flowers to be so that they don't all get crammed over to one side. So these orange flowers are kind of made up of like U's. Put one up here. And then this is kind of where the top of the flower will be. So I'm just going to kind of mark that out stem. This one will hang over the edge, upside down U. Kind of hang over the edge there. A little circle. This one may kind of point over here to the side. And then these pink flowers stand tall. them some curve, make them a little bit more interesting. And so that should be sketched now in pencil for you. So I'm going to take that off. I've already got one that I sketched in pencil. And now we're going to start painting. We're going to start with the orange flowers. I'm going to take my small brush and get it wet. I'm going to grab some yellow. And 
some orange. Make kind of a golden color. I'm just gonna kind of make kind of like you would see like a kind of like a cartoon flower from the center of where the flower is, kind of the center of that circle that we drew out. Just kind of make some edges of some petals. I'm just working from the center of that circle that we drew. I'm not really an art teacher. I just do this for fun, so it just kind of shows you that, you know, you don't have to be a professional to, to paint or to have fun and to create something pretty. let that dry for just a second and we're going to add some red to the color orange gold that we just made. I'm going to kind of start layering colors. Just kind of filling in some of the other spaces. Creating depth. Kind of reminds me of a lion's mane. The colors, just kind of yellows and oranges. And it's kind of crazy. It just kind of splays out kind of like a lion's mane. Or a starburst. going back and filling in some of those holes with some more yellow. And I can see some of my pencil lines. That's why you really want to sketch out your, your design kind of lightly so that way when you paint over it you won't be able to see those lines. Gonna get some red and make our darkest color so far. This is gonna be our shadows on those flowers. I'm gonna let them dry just a little bit more. It's good if you have another paper plate you can fan with. Or a hair dryer. red color to the places that would kind of catch some of the shadows. Kind of in the center, 
that flower and on the bottom of these petals. Just some little dots around, just kind of fun. You can't really go wrong with these. They're just kind of messy little little flowers. Now we're gonna move on to starting our lavender stalks there. Get some pink. And we're going to make it very translucent. We're going to add a lot of water to it. So we're just kind of sketching out where those stalks will be. Kind of start at the top and just kind of pull down and follow that line. Kind of mapping out some buds. get bigger as we get closer to the bottom of the stalk. trying to do this a little bit faster. I did it one other time and it was like half an hour and <laughs> seemed like kind of a long video. So I'm trying to go fast, but the thing about painting is to take your time and to enjoy it. Just kind of let your mind wander. No mistakes. Only happy accidents. Channel your inner Bob Ross. So now I kind of know where those stalks will be. And we're waiting. While we're waiting for those to dry, we're going to start doing the green stems and parts of our orange flowers. So some light green. And we're going to mix that with some brown. to thank Carly for giving me these watercolors. Kind of felt like it was fortuitous that she just happened to give them to me the same day that, that Farron messaged me and asked me to think about maybe doing another, another painting. It's kind of a God thing. So I've got this kind of muddy green and we're gonna go to those U shapes kind of outline those. I'm not going to fill it in. I'm just going to kind of kind of brush stroke up. Leaving white space makes your painting look more interesting. Allows room for more color later.
All right. Now we're gonna add another color to our pink flowers. We've got pink. Now we're gonna add purple. Just add it directly to that color that we just had. Now I'll kind of make all the colors kind of marry together. When you don't just use one color on top of another, you kind of create your own new color. So same thing, starting at the top, just kind of adding some more buds in the holes. Overlapping. Maybe some of them aren't completely colored in. Leave some some highlights. Maybe do some more, I don't know what you want to call these, we need to find a name for these things, just paint splatter dots, I don't know. We're going to add some shadow to our green stems on the orange flowers. Add just a little bit more brown to the green that we were using. Make it even darker. And just kind of outline the side a little bit in part of the stalk. That's really just going to give it the illusion that it has more depth. We're going to add our final color to the lavender. It's going to be Almost a blue, almost a royal blue. Definitely is a blue, blue purple. Adding it to our fuchsia color there. it almost just kind of outline and shade some of those little buds
some darker, stronger colors at the bottom, and then less as we go up to the top. Don't be afraid to let those flowers kind of overlap. It's kind of where you get dimension from. If all these flowers were jammed in that pot, they would definitely be touching and overlapping. You can make those colors, those flowers different colors if you wanted to, just work from the same principle of starting light and then building darker colors of the same family together. And now we're going to make our flower pot, it's not a flower pot, I keep saying that, our watering hand decoration, white crayon. You have to push kind of hard, it's hard to see where you're drawing with the white crayon. This is why you want to save this part till now, because if you did this before we painted those orange flowers, you wouldn't be able to put them where you wanted them. The brush kind of hard. how this teal one turned out. I tried to do kind of like an antique galvanized look, but so you can go for that if you want. Or you can just make it a bright color. Make it whatever you want. I'm gonna do that teal color again. So start with more green and a little sky blue. The darker the color, the better your um, crayon is going to resist and show up. I think I learned that technique back in elementary school, but it's pretty cool. It's important to make sure that your flower is dry because if you got up next to anything that was wet, it would just start bleeding. that paint around that flower without coloring it too much.
did that one pretty well, but on some of the other ones, I kind of went outside the line here a little bit. And if you do that, you can just take a wet paintbrush, um, wet, clean paintbrush, and kind of erase and kind of pick up some of that paint. Watercolor is pretty flexible, which is kind of nice. I feel like that is just a little bit too green, so I'm going to try and pick up some of that color. And this is why it's important to have really good watercolor paper because you couldn't rub so much. On cheap paper. Some of that color up. Did it that time. doesn't look like my crayon is holding up to all that rubbing, so try to get your color that you want your, water, your watering can to be. Try not to work it around so much or else you'll end up kind of losing that effect. All right. You can let that dry and kind of add some shadows, kind of like this one where I kind of added some brown to it and the brown in the handle. But you'll have to let that dry a little bit more else. It'll just start running everywhere. Add some brown here. It's a good example of how white space can make it interesting. I'll just color it all in, leave some space. Imagine I'm getting some bleeding. It's okay. So after it all dries, you can work in some other colors if you want to the background. Like I put some yellow in this one. Alright. Well, if you do this, definitely share your pictures and try to stay creative while you're cooped up in the house and get your kids to be creative and... Oh! One more thing. It's not really a watering can if no water can come out. So use a dark color like brown. <laughs> and 
wait for it to dry and you can add some add some dots to it. What else? I've done it so many times now I'm forgetting steps. Anyway, like I said, please show me your pictures. Be creative. If you do any other watercolors, show me. You know, I love I love to see everyone's everyone's work. Y'all have a great night.